we'll kind of go over what's in there a little bit. So I did include a paper with like information on how to do it. Um, if you just wanted to go at it, but um, you'll have some pipe cleaners. I included two in case your letter kind of needed some more pieces, or if you've got enough left over, you might be able to do a second one. And then you'll have three of these needles. There's a large, a medium, and a small. You really could do everything with the large and medium, but the small is really good for like the little details, kind of like the mistletoe that I put up here. And then you also have like this foam pad. That's what you can use to protect your table from stabbing um, all over into it. And then you also have a little bit of string and that'll just be the top of your ornament. And then a roving. And a little bit about the roving. I'm gonna make sure to pin myself here so everyone can see me. The roving, like it's pretty tough when you try to pull it all together. If there's ever a part that you need to separate it, you just kind of fluff it out and you can then pull parts of it at a time. Um, and you can also see how this is a bunch of colors mixed together. If you've got a couple colors in your kit that you want to mix together, you can take a portion of it and then the other color that you want to mix with it. And you can just kind of keep pulling them together to mix them. I kind of did that here with that red and white. And that's how you kind of get that marbled look. This here, this kind that's already mixed, it actually came that way from the score. But then you would start working with that. So the first step we're gonna have is to start making the letter that you're gonna work with. And the pipe cleaners are gonna be your base to work with. It'll help you hold on the roving and form it into the shape it is. And you can take scissors and cut a piece off if you need to. So for this one, I was doing an R, kind of like this one, which this was our inspiration piece. I actually found this at the Hallmark store and I was like, I can make that myself. So then I also decided to make it a program. But here I already cut off a piece and to make an R, I just wrap it around. So it holds in place. And it's kind of even. So some letters are gonna be easier than others like an M, it's gonna be really easy. And you can choose to make it smaller or bigger. Extra there so I could cut off more. If you wanted to, you could get fancy and do it more of a cursive letter as well. So the next step will be to just tie this string on where you think it'll hit, hang well. So like I did the top of the B for this one. I'm doing right here for this one. If I did the R, I would tie it at the top as well. And that'll just be what we use to hang our ornament when we're done with it. And I'll take my scissors and trim any extra. Okay. Once we have our letter and our tie put on, we're gonna start 
wrapping some more ribbon around the letter. I'm going to start turning it around. It can be quite fluffy. You don't want the pipe cleaner showing through. But if you don't manage to cover the pipe cleaner, it's okay. We can go back and put a little more in later. This is really just getting enough on there to work with. And you could start working on it and do just portions at a time, or you can wrap the whole thing at one time. It might be easier to pull your roving apart and add it as you go. Add some of the mix here as well. Might not be able to tell what your letter is while you're on this step. That's okay. We'll refine it as we go on. So I've got mine wrapped. And I'm going to just take the large needle of this piece. So you can see there's these barbs on there, they're very tiny. And about there's one, there's one. And those barbs catch the fibers of the roving. And roving is just wool that's been cleaned and dyed straight off of the sheet that hasn't been made into the yarn yet. Um, yarn makers will take this and spin it, and it'll be very tightly wound actually just a little bit at a time to make yarn. But with this, we're just gonna be stabbing it and those little barbs that are in it are gonna catch the fibers and tangle it together. So you'll just kind of at the beginning, stab a bunch to start shaping your letter. Now, if you need to hold it while you're working, you'll want to kind of have your nails like this to protect yourself. Because if it hits your nail, it's just kind of kind of glance off. But if it hits your skin, it's definitely going to hurt a bit. Um, and you might bleed, just like any other needle if you've done so. It'll kind of feel like if you're given blood, that little um, pinch that you get from having your eye infected. So nothing too scary, but still hurts. Now I'm gonna keep working around these. And just doing quick jabs. And it might take a while to start getting your shape. But once I get a good beginning of my shape, make sure to flip it over and keep working on all of the sides. That way, this back side isn't like completely flat. You want to be able to shape it because a lot of times when you're starting and hanging, it might chill. I've kind of gotten a 
general shape, so I'm going to flip it over and work at it a little from this side. So it kind of got flat from where I was poking it into my phone here. So I'm going to kind of fold that over a little. I think right here, that little fluff I took earlier, a little bit of that right there. I'll put that in. So it's really a work as you go project. If you notice something that needs some work, you can work on it. And even when you're done, if you see this hanging there and you're like, hmm, I wish I had done this to it, you can take it down and continue working on it as long as you've got one of these around. Um, I actually had a project that I did a while back. It was the beautiful cat that like, it didn't turn out so good because I was talking at the same time and making it during the class. And so then after I took it home, I went back to it and worked on it a little more. And it turned out much better. It's mostly the face that needed work. And I'm going to keep working on this until I get it to be, and you can't really feel it for yourself, but it's kind of got a pretty good density of squishiness. This one over here is really dense. I think there was something else in here other than the wire that they worked around. Or it might have even been done with wet felting. Either way, you get the same result. So like you can see here, I've got a lot more fluffiness and it's not, not as squishy as this one is. Well, I don't know if that's the right word to describe it. It springs back more. All this is just kind of like, it feels more like air. That's a better way to describe it. And you want to kind of make sure to come in and add it at different angles so that you're kind of working in the round. I'll kind of angling my needle this way just to just straight down into it. And any like corners you've got like this little curve here, you want to make sure to define them more and do that by dabbing a lot into that same spot. I'll just find it here on the back as well. Yeah, and if you felt it really hard like this one is, you could run the risk of breaking your needle, but you've got three of them for that you can break one. Um, I've broken a needle on the I was looking. And actually, I wasn't able to get the needle back out. It was a penguin, and I just made it way too hard. Um, and then also, over time, like if you've been using the same needle for a while for a lot of projects, they do dull and they won't work as well. 
So if you're if you're continuing to use your needle and you kind of notice, hey, this isn't really belching for me anymore. It's time for a new needle. You had like colors that you were kind of blending together. You've got a pretty sharp edge, like I've got going on here. You can actually kind of go at a horizontal angle, and kind of blend them together a little bit. You do want to be careful when you're doing this because you could break a needle if you don't like pull too much this way. You also don't want to stab yourself while doing this. And then I'm going to blend some of the paint up here. I'm going to move some of that color around. So one thing you don't want to do is just pick it up and kind of stab at it like this because you'll definitely hit your hand but you can kind of pick it up so that you can work on it this way and shape some of those sides Trying my best to aim it away from my hand. Here, I've kind of noticed some of my pipe cleaner is showing as I've worked it down. I'm going to take a little bit of this pink so I can tie it in like the rest of that. Fill in that space. And actually, when I did this one, I actually kind of laid in stuff afterwards to kind of blend in the green and then did that sideways kind of poking to push it down a little more. So I can move around this pink a little bit if I need to. And if you got any spots that it's kind of dipped down a little too low, so I've got the spot here, you can kind of pull it up a little bit, fluff it back out. You just want to be careful to not pull too much so that you would break your needle, but enough that you can fluff it back out. And that just kind of happens as you're 
dabbing really hard into it. You might do a little too much in just one area. impressive that it can go from kind of looking like a mess of just fluff everywhere and then you just poke it a bunch of times and you've got a shape. That's a pretty good shape. I can continue to refine it if I want to. Um, but I think I've got a pretty good shape. Now, I'll kind of go over how to add a detail. Um, it's okay if you're not that far yet. Um, but say like I wanted to add a heart, like there's a heart on that one, so maybe over here. I'd find what color I want. And then usually you end up taking more roving than you end up needing. That's why I think you might be able to do two out of these kits. Just kind of hard to gauge how much you actually need. And I'm, I'm just gonna kind of roll that up a little bit. It gives me some, something to work with. And this works in there. Start making my shape. And I have the little one. I don't actually need the little one at this point. I'm going to continue using the big one. That is kind of facing it as I go into the heart. It might take me a while to actually get it looking like the heart. I'm actually going to pick it up and flip it over. Work on it a little bit in this way. I do want to leave this side flat. I want it to be rounded like I have the other side. Because I'll put the flat side up against my piece here. And I don't want to felt it too hard either, because if it's really hard, it's going to be hard to put it on the, and you, you don't want this too soft when you go to felt it on there either, because you need to have something for it to grab onto. Now these foam pads, I have noticed that as you're stabbing away at them, they will get flatter. Um, things you can use in the future. Um, I've used like the pad, like the foam padding from shipping. So like my uncle used to get insulin. So he would have the refrigerated ones and it would have like this foam stuff in there that worked really well. Um, 
there's also like this more plasticky foam, like these ones are that come with different things that are more fragile. So saving that stuff kind of works well. Um, the, the styrofoam stuff doesn't work as good. It just makes a mess. Um, you could also, if you really want to get invested in the hobby, they have like upholstery foam. You can get it at like Hobby Lobby or Joann's or I guess a upholstery store as well. And that is thicker, nice foam that you can use for that. Um, I've also heard of people just like using pillows and that you will get fibers stuck in it. So don't use a pillow that you wanted to keep nice. That's really too big. Eh, it'll work. And I can continue to shape it once it's on here. But this is a good point to add it on. So I'm just going to kind of dab it in going around all of that edge to incorporate the wool from the heart and the wool from the M. Down and even in the middle through it to incorporate some middle parts and to continue shaping it. And this might be a good point for a medium or a smaller one to do the final details of this to really get in there. And like the mistletoe that I did here, I just put some green down and then I made little tiny balls over here and then felted those on with a small one. So now I'm just going back over some of the areas that I think need a little refining, pulling out some areas that I pushed in too much. Like I said, this is a project that you can take a step back from and come back to it and work on it um, because if it's a medium that doesn't dry, you've always got your um, you've always got your needle, then you can continue working on it. Um, so if like there's just an area that's frustrating you, you can put it aside and come back to it another day. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like paint that maybe it's vital to get something done. Um, and then you can also come back to it in a year or so and be like, hmm, I really don't like this. I'm going to take this part off and add this to it. I don't like the position of where the heart is. I can actually kind of help guide it a little bit up by just kind of pushing it horizontally through the whole thing. So I kind of moved it a little higher. Or I could even be like, eh, I don't like it there and rip the whole thing off. Touch it up where it was at. And then put it on somewhere else. So if I want it a little higher, I still want it to be a little smaller. And 
which you might want to just remove some. At this point, it was getting too hard. I'm going to have to work at it to get it fluffed out enough to remove it. Yeah, and if it gets too hard, it might be too hard to pull apart. But I got some of it off, and I can start reshaping it back into the heart. So that shows how it can be pretty forgiving, because you can completely rip something apart and then put it back together. I actually had someone that had bought something that was needle felted and their dog got a hold of it because it, it kind of looked like a pet toy. And they brought it in and they were able to use the needle and put it back together. Same old process of putting it back on. And as always, if you do need any help, um, you can always contact me with information in the description. And you can also set up an appointment for one on one help in the makerspace. So you can bring in your project and I'll help you out. So good luck with the rest of it.